It's that time of year again. The flu season used to mean household variety snuffles and sore throats. But nowadays, catch the wrong strain and you could end up in hospital, or worse. Last year it was swine flu. We picked that one up from pigs. And as I've discovered, that's just the start of it. Bats, birds, horses, monkeys. They all carry bugs that could kill millions. Ground zero is Africa, where our frontline scientists, the virus hunters, are scouring the jungles, hunting the next big killer. <laughs> We're deep in Cameroon, West Africa, far from civilization. A place where sickness and death are no strangers. And what happens here in this primitive land could well affect the future health of all mankind. It was in this forest the AIDS virus was born. Hey Matt, uh, what sort of viruses have you found here? Well, what we found is a couple of viruses really closely related to HIV, from the same family as HIV. Ooh. Aussie scientist Matt LeBreton is a virus hunter from Global Virus Forecasting, and he's stalking the next worldwide pandemic. Oh, oh, success. We've got one. What is it? So this is a blue diker. A little uh, small antelope. Let's put him in the snare overnight, yeah. So the hunter's done well. He's done well. He's, uh, he's going to have a good lunch for him and his family. And, it's uh, from animals like this, well, killed for bushmeat, that deadly viruses can cross over to humans. He's going to wrap that now, is he? Many harbour lethal bugs that may have laid dormant for millennia. He's kind of bundled it up. Is it melodramatic to say that the, the next big pandemic could come from an animal like that? Well, look, half of all known human infectious diseases have come from, from animals. So yeah. there's a good chance that the next one is going to come from an animal and we've got to make sure that we're one step ahead of them. Cameroon and the Congo Basin are considered global hotspots for viruses. Their humid equatorial climate, the perfect incubator for all manner of pathogens. This is the River Jar. It empties into the Congo about 250 kilometres down that way. Not so many years ago, it acted as a natural barrier. Any viruses in remote communities tended to stay there and die out. But now, cars, motorbikes, better transport, however rudimentary, mean people and bushmeat flows pretty quickly and spreading viruses is so much easier. As HIV has already shown us, whatever happens here in Central Africa no longer stays here. That's why Matt LeBreton's work here is so important. What's the name of this one? This is a blue diker back here and this is a, a moustache monkey. His job is to intercept the deadly animal viruses before they spread. It's a bushmeat buffet. It is, it's a, it's a big Sunday lunch. Ebola, SARS, swine flu, avian flu, Nipah virus. Most of the world's most devastating pandemics have come from remote areas like this. So Matt, you're trying to find it here at its source before people catch it. Exactly, try and find it before it finds us. So how does he do it? Well, first, Matt must work out how the virus makes the jump from animal to human. In most cases here, it's blood from the bushmeat brought back by hunters. You're turning the hunters into your own field officers. Exactly. Matt regularly collects samples for testing, and he's already discovered new highly infectious strains of the AIDS virus. It really is all about the blood, isn't it? It is. Blood is a really important part of it. You know? But he knows just how easily the next global plague could slip through the net. I think there's no question that in the future there will be another pandemic of some sort, and it's just important that we're, we try and stay one, one step ahead of that. You just don't want it to come from here? 
I don't think we want it to come from anywhere, but yeah, from, from here we can do a little bit to make sure that uh, we're, we're finding anything that might be on its way out of here for sure. But the frightening truth is that even here in Australia, we have our own potentially devastating virus. It's a very serious, a very severe infection and a horrible way to die. A deadly pathogen carried by the humble flying fox. It's only spilled out in recent times. It's called Hendra virus, and it's already killed four people. And look at those teeth, he's only a little guy. It spread to humans by horses, but it was detective work by world-renowned virus expert Dr Hume Field that traced it back to fruit bats. There you go, Junior. The horses seem to be necessary to amplify the amount of virus. These guys secrete a very small amount of virus, but horses seem to be exquisitely sensitive to it. If there's close contact between humans and the horse, then there's the potential for spillover. This lethal virus takes its name from the Brisbane suburb where it broke out 16 years ago. If you catch Hendra virus, you've only got a 50-50 chance of survival. First comes massive hemorrhaging in the brain and the lungs. Then vital organs begin to shut down. Death can come within days. So when you first got sick, did, did you realise how bad it was? No, because I didn't, didn't think I'd ever get sick. How much of a difference does it make? Natalie Bohm was fortunate. Completely. What's his name? Murray. <laughs> One of only three people to survive the virus. She became infected last year, but only just pulled through. You were unlucky to catch it, but this miraculous recovery. Yeah, a lot of my friends say I'm one of the strongest people they've ever met. And I, don't, I think if I wasn't so stubborn and so strong, I, you wouldn't get through it. Like, there's no way. It just takes over so quickly. Well, Murray's happy that you made it. Yeah. <laughs> He's good. Natalie, a veterinary nurse, had to learn to walk and talk again and still suffers extreme fatigue and depression. Tragically, the vet she was working with, Alastair Rogers, succumbed to the virus. He just went the wrong way too quickly and you know I was I'm still recovering but you know at least you're here yeah some days they're good days some days are bad days but I would just really like to see a future and that's the hardest thing so why is this virus on the march well more bats than ever before are descending on our cities as their foraging areas diminish Get there, run around first count. Okay, this is about to go up. Dr. Field and his team set up a large net Send her up. near one of Brisbane's largest colonies. Well, let's hope we got it in the right place, folks. Then wait for them to fly out on their nightly mission. As the bats return in the half light before dawn. Okay. Yes! Drop it! Yes. Okay. Three of the hapless creatures are captured for testing. Yes, yes. Oh. Yeah, but she's got a hunk of fruit in her mouth at the moment. She's just grabbed some takeaways and is charging home. Yeah. We'll pop her in a bag and see what else we can get. So we've got a female black flying fox. Dr. Field has found Hendra virus in the saliva, blood, feces and urine of the bats. Uh, let's do an oral swab. And, we'll... and here's the link. Some of them feed all night in trees in horse paddocks, infecting the ground beneath. Yep. If the horse is unlucky enough to come along when the bat has just recently contaminated it, ingests that grass, eats that feed, licks that rail, that's how it can get infected. OK, if you can just pop that mask on him, Liam, and turn that up to five... We'll get so far, humans have caught Hendra virus only from horses, not directly from the bats blood sample, yeah. But Dr Field is taking no chances. 
we avoid contact with any of the body fluid. We wear the double gloves so we don't want urine in the eyes, so we wear the goggles when we're working underneath the animals. You can't be too careful. You can't be too careful. This is a virus that's highly lethal. 50% of the people that have been infected have died. It's a very unforgiving virus. All right, we've got everything now. She's starting to wake up already. When a virus this lethal is discovered, no matter where in the world, it comes here to the CSIRO's High Security Biocontainment Facility in Geelong. This is probably the most dangerous workplace in Australia, perhaps one of the riskiest in the world. Inside this airtight lab, these scientists are working on the Hendra virus right now. And as you can see, they leave nothing to chance. Even their safety suits are hooked up to compressed air. For what they're handling, there is no treatment, no cure, no vaccine the tiniest mistake could be fatal. If Hendra went human to human, how much of a problem would that be for us? It depends on how many people are involved. What is this place? This is the uh, diagnostic uh, laboratory. So Deborah Middleton leads a scientific team working on a cure for Hendra and other viruses. If it went human to human like SARS did, so once SARS came out of bats, went into civet cats, adapted to people, it went like wildfire. If the same thing happened with Hendra virus, yes, would we would be in serious trouble. So the race would be on here to it, it get would. a vaccine quick it, smart? It would. But scientists warned, don't overlook the flu. That's right, the flu. <laughs> with more animal viruses and a world growing ever smaller, the greatest threat may come if flu strains combine. They say if bird flu and swine flu morph into one virus, it could be the deadliest pandemic yet. If you become infected, you have a 60% chance of dying. So potentially a new pandemic would kill a lot more that's people right. than the Spanish flu that's killed. Right. That's right, that's right. And there are so many more people in the world and they move around much more easily than they did in the past. Well, we're talking potentially millions. Mm, that's right. Ce qu'on appelle monkey box. The job now, if scientists are not to be blindsided by the next pandemic, is prevention rather than cure. Just is talking about the different viruses that people might catch from wild animals. And... In Cameroon, Matt Le Breton and his team are teaching hunters to avoid blood contact with the animals they kill. They just return to the population as normal. Yeah. And here, Hume Field is working on a vaccine against our own Hendra virus. Excellent. Clearly, Hendra virus is the most significant uh, emerging disease threat in Australia at the moment. And behind Hendra, what's next? What's next? <laughs> that doesn't fill me with confidence. Well, we don't know. We don't know what's next. Hello, I'm Amelia Adams. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for our brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.